You're listening to the Tao of Indifference, sex, dating and relationship advice for an indifferent world. For more advice and tips, check out DaoofIndifference.com or follow us on Twitter at Indifferent underscore D. Hello listeners and welcome to the Tao of Indifference. I am Demetrius, aka Indifferent D. I am joined by my co-host Delaney. Delaney... I'm on a roll. You're yeah. On a roll. <laughs> you are on a roll just in general, just yeah. in life. Yeah. Um, today's topic is how to plan jaw dropping dates. First, we're going to answer some dating questions from Reddit, and Delaney's going to do all the work. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> let's get to the first question. The first question is from Excelsior24. Maybe he's a New Yorker, maybe he's a comic fan. Who, who knows? And the question topic is she, 26, keeps sending me. 26 male provocative snapchats but she doesn't try to hang out all right so i feel silly asking this but i need some insight this girl i've been talking to for the past four months keeps sending me sexy snapchats that i enjoy but it confuses me because she doesn't seem to make a point to hang out with me and when i try to set something she sends to flake or say she is busy i feel like me and her have good chemistry when we talk in person but I'm getting frustrated with her sending me these things and not backing it up. Should I just straight up ask her about it? Huh. So, at first I thought, he's obviously being catfished. Yeah. But he says that when we talk in person, they have good chemistry. So he's clearly seen her before in person. So part of me is like, do you, you know how Snapchat works? Vaguely? Kind of. Yeah, because uh, my girlfriend has Snapchat. Oh, wow. I, I don't want to know. Yeah. Um, I don't think she sends provocative pictures <laughs> to you. Um, yeah, to me. She doesn't, she doesn't send any. Send any. Um, so, yeah. So how it works is you send a picture, it expires, and it gets deleted. Or oh, you like write words on it like, you I'm bored. Or, yeah. yeah. So you can send provocative pictures, and you can also not send provocative pictures. So it sounds like he knows this person in real life. She sends mm. sexy Snapchats, I'm assuming they're like sex. And she doesn't put any effort into hanging out. But he sees her in person. Hmm. So should so let's answer his question. Should I just straight up ask her about it? Should you ask her why she sends you sexy pictures and she doesn't want to hang out? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Like, hey, um, thanks for these pictures. When are we gonna hang out? Like, why don't you want to hang out? Just ask. I would ask. I I would be annoyed. Like at first, it'd be like, "Oh man, I can't believe I got the sex." And then it's like, "Well, are we gonna hang out?" Yeah. Because after a point, it's just you're just getting porn from a friend. Yeah. But you can't hook. They don't want to hook up with you because they don't want to see you. So it's kind of like, what's the point? You know? Yeah. Ask. Save your time. Agree? Disagree? Anything? Disagree. Disagree. I would. Yes. Um, All right. <laughs> I think she, I, 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 um, I had an answer in my head when I first read it, <laughs> um, and I couldn't think of the word, it started with E, and I was like, what is that word, what is that word, I was like, is it voyeurism? I think she's an exhibitionist, I think she wants to be seen, and she's sending it to a friend because that's where her comfort level is right now, like, I'm not only comfortable with you seeing me naked, because we're cool, but I'm not content to like, hey guys, I'm going to be in my window with my curtains open. Just massaging myself or something. Oh wow! I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> I um I wouldn't ask about it. I would either uh, stop viewing the pictures, but most likely you're not going to because if she's attractive, you're gonna look anyway. Yeah. And just uh, save it. You know, save it in your archives. You uh, can't. Well, if you do, they get notified. Oh. Yeah, that's the point. It's oh. like it's supposed to be like I sent it to you and it expires. What you oh. can do is like screenshot it, mm-hmm. but then they are notified that you screenshotted it. I would, I mean, at that point, I would just do it anyway. Like, what is yeah. she going to do? Or you can take a picture of your phone with a different phone. <laughs> you are s- s- mischievous. <laughs> All right, next one. This is, oof, that one's long. Let's do another short one. Okay. This is from Just Chill, Please. And it's from a 23-year-old female, about a 24-year-old male, making it official with Guy. All right, I've been talking to this guy for a long time. I really like him. We talk on the phone just about every night for an hour or longer, never running out of things to say. I visited him a few times. He lives about a few hours away. So when I visited, I sleep in his bed. No sex. 
basically we're a couple, but I'm anxious to call it a relationship because my last one was horrible and it's only been about six months since it ended. My ex did a number on me and I feel like damaged goods. I'm trying to learn to love myself again and I'm really hesitant to get into anything serious when I'm not there yet. Is it possible to be in a relationship and still kind of learn to love yourself? He's not pressuring me, but is just confused, just as confused as to why we act like a couple, but I don't want to make it a thing yet. I'm nervous. Help. Do you want to go first? I'll go first. Okay. I think, uh, to answer, I think the first question was, is it possible to, to be in a to relationship and learn to love yourself? Love yourself? I think so, as long as you both understand that, and, and you are honest with uh, the progress you're making. Mm. Like, because some people are like, yeah, you know, I, I just broke up with somebody. I'm not ready for a relationship. I'm going to try. And we just have to take it slow. But somehow, through the course of events, it doesn't go slow. It starts mm-hmm. to become faster. And you're just like, it's going too fast for me. I feel like I'm being pressured. Yeah. So I think as long, and you have a game plan, you know, or like some type of goal system, like by this date or not date, by this time period, before we make this step, I want to be here. Right. Before, uh, before I'm ready to move to the next level of our relationship, um, I think it's normal to be nervous and yeah. scared, especially when you just leave a uh, bad relationship. But I don't think you should hold off on a good one just because of it's only been six months. Like you know, good right. things can come as soon as something bad happens all the time. So cool. Yeah, I disagree with all of them. Okay, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, uh, I think you just. I think the best bet, and I'm, I'm with you on that 100%, is to just have an open conversation. I'm nervous about this because six months ago, bad relationship, I don't want to rush things. Just get it all out there, and maybe you don't need to call it an official thing. You are you might be too hung up on that. Just have an open conversation yeah. so that you're both on the same page. And that's it. I think that your approach... You're asking the question, so it's obviously you're approaching it in a way... You're approaching it in a very smart way, so... Keep doing what you're doing, just chill pill, please. <laughs> just chill pill. <laughs> just chill, please. Um, yeah, I think just have a conversation. and he, Especially if he's not pressuring you. He sounds like a great guy. He's not pressuring you. You're not feeling pressured. Just have the conversation. Next one! That one's super long. Let's save that for last. Okay. He told me to move on for from Sink or Swim 82. Do you think that person was born in 1982? That would be cool. Maybe. Let's maybe read. they sinked or swam 82 times. Like Maybe mm-hmm. they're a bad swimmer. Or yeah, it could be. Maybe their birthday is August 2nd. Oh. Who knows? Anyway. We met in September and he told me that he wasn't over a girl that he has liked for two years. But she won't be with him and he tried to kiss her the previous April, and she got really mad and stopped talking to him. Well, we started... God, she is poor at grammar. I hope she's not 32. <laughs> right? 32 years. Yeah, 32. Well, we started going on dates in September because she had stopped talking four months earlier. Wait. Time out. Yeah. <laughs> I just teed it up. Um, so, he can't get over a girl. Let's just make sure we're framing this. Yeah. He can't get over one girl. She rejected him, so now he's like, well, you're here, so we might as well start going on dates. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, that's Okay. Well, in October, she contacted him because she needed help with her homework. She's not 32 years old. She told him... (laughs) I'm pretty sure she's not 32. She told him we can do things as friends and see if anything develops. She invited him to her Thanksgiving and sat on a different couch than him. She won't go on dates with him, but sometimes on Sunday she will play computer games with him. He basically did her whole homework project that took hours. Okay. Uh, he said she has feelings for him, but is but she is scared of commitment and per- and physical touch. All the while, he and I kiss, cuddle, and he told me he loves me and has feelings for me. We texted every day. But he recently told me to move on because even though she won't be with him, he is emotionally hung up on her. And now I feel sick. He barely talks to me. I am on day three of no contact, and I am sad. What do you think? You, I think you need to move on. I, I feel like this isn't a grown-up. Uh, like this is this maybe this person's person. eight years old. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's two eight-year-olds. Uh, it's it sounds like it's high school. Yeah, it sounds like. God damn, I hate when I get high school kids. Um, really simply, 
and you need to move on. You need to move on. I don't care how old you are. You need to move on. He's pretty much made it clear, like, he's using you as his fallback. You are the fallback. Yeah. He's telling you he loves you, but I think he really loves the affection and attention. Um, just move on. He's in love with one girl, and she doesn't love him, and for some reason he's still pursuing her because he's a dum-dum. So move on. Save yourself a lot of time and energy and stress and find some guy who is as, as obsessed with you as this guy is obsessed about the girl who like doesn't want to even sit on the same couch as him. Yeah. Simple as that. Good luck, Synchro Swim 82. You're lying. You're like 10. <laughs> Bastard. I'm sorry. No, that's me. Good luck. Seriously. All right. Last question from Dating Throwaway 321. This is obviously a throwaway account. Yeah. The question is, this is, it's not, I don't even know if it's a question, it's just a terrible story. It is long as hell. This is complicated. So, last night, I went on a date with a girl, and I, a girl I'm interested in, and it turned into a weird, weird night. I was hoping to get some advice on this. I'm glad you asked. As I'm a bit lost on how to approach this all. That said, the story is going to need some pretext. Before we get started, let's get some names out of the way. Megan, girl I'm dating slash interested in. Sarah, my best friend and Megan's mutual friend. Is he kind of bone both of them? I think so. I like where this is going. <laughs> no, nope, Sarah's in love with him. What <coughs> I'll bet you a dollar Sarah's secretly in love with him. We haven't read it, by the okay, way. Okay. Listeners, we have not read it. Do you um, think Sarah's secretly in love with him? I think, oh, you know, I'm going to put a weird twist on this. What? Sarah kissed Megan. I'll bet you a dollar. <laughs> Shake on it. Okay. Handshake. They can't see it. <laughs> So I met Megan through one of my closest friends, Sarah. They both came out to my birthday celebration a few weeks ago, and I was immediately interested in this Megan girl. Megan. Because of the nature, because of, the nature of it being my birthday thing, God, I'm running correct, everyone's writing. With a dozen or so of my closest friends there, I didn't have much opportunity to talk to Megan, so I got her information to connect with her at a later date. Everyone's super old-fashioned. Yeah. It's like, I got her information... The following week, Megan and I got some coffee together and talked for a couple hours. I had a really good time and decided I was interested in this girl. A few hours after my coffee date with her, Sarah contacted me and asked me how it went. I had not told her about the coffee date, so I assumed Megan had, which I wrote off as a good sign. Sarah and I then met for dinner a couple nights later and we discussed it all. Sarah seemed happy to hear that I liked Megan. Oh man, we both lost. <laughs> and said she'd be my wingman and help, me t and help talk me up slash get Megan excited for who I am. I complied and eventually asked Megan out to dinner for this past Friday, last night. Mm. Ooh, this is hot. Well, on Thursday, Sarah had to show had to stop over at my place to pick up some things I had for when I was cat-sitting for her when she was out of town. She then said, I hear you got a hot date tomorrow night. I said yes again, knowing that I did not tell her of my plans with Megan. She was meeting Megan that evening for dinner and again said she was going to talk me up. Fast forward to last night. It's long. Wow. Oh my god. This could be a good one. I'm going to read it quickly. No interruption. Fast forward to last night. I swing by Megan's place around 7. She comes out and we proceed to go to dinner. Conversation was good. We had a dinner. As we were talking on our way back to my car, I suggested that we go to this really great imp improv show that my friends are in. She said she would love to, but Sarah had already made movie plans that evening with her. Oh, I think I might be right. <laughs> that thought was sort of... I thought that was sort of fucked up, mm. as why would Sarah plan something on the night that I was taking her friend out on a date, but she invited me back to her place for coffee or a beer, so I complied and swept away my confusion of Sarah's scheming. We go back to her place and have coffee. We're just hanging out in her kitchen chatting as Sarah is texting her about the movie plans. God damn it. <laughs> Eventually, with Megan running late because we were chatting, she decided to call Sarah and put her on speakerphone. We then proceed to explain to her that we're hanging out and running late so that we're and that we're across town at Megan's house. Sarah's mad because she's going to miss the first part of the movie, so Megan eventually ends the call and tells me that she has to go see this movie with Sarah. I say I understand, and because we're late, we're hastily rushed out of the house. I leave with a goodbye hug, but not really much of an opportunity to go in for a goodnight kiss or anything of that nature. You're wrong. You should have kissed her when she took you back to her place. When driving home, I text... I'm just... So we can get to the meat of this. When, I'm, when driving home, I text Sarah and tell her she was kind of fucked up that she was cock-blocking me with her movie plans and that her wingman of the year title is revoked. She Ooh. got defensive. Yeah, wow. 
To get defensive with me, so I just let the conversation expire, confused as to what just happened on an otherwise nice evening. About 45 minutes later, I get back home and then promptly leave to meet up for a beer with my good friend Matt. He didn't even tell us who Matt is. Yeah. <laughs> We're having a beer and I tell him how my night went and how I was sort of screwed over by my good friend Sarah. We laugh about it and go upstairs to a different bar. We get up there and there is Sarah and Megan with a few friends who I didn't end up who with a few friends who didn't end up going to the movie because Sarah wanted to meet up with a guy that she likes instead. So I kind of awkwardly wave and say hi, to which Sarah tells me that I need to join them and come over. My mistake was complying, so I ended up sitting down with them for a while, only to feel like the guy who was following them around town. I sat there at the opposite corner of the table to Megan, just drinking my drink and questioning myself why I was even there. My purpose there felt really forced. I didn't want to be there much at all. Eventually I got out of there and exchanged another half-ass hug goodbye to Megan. So this date went from good to okay to what the hell, all in the course of a few hours. So at this point, I'm not really sure if I should bother setting up a second date with Megan, as the entire night turned into re into feeling really off for me and her. I've never had anything romantic with Sarah, but I think it's pretty obvious that her actions tell me that she isn't too comfortable with me dating her friend. Anyone have a suggestion on how to mend these rickety bridges? Oh my god. We both were wrong. Yeah. I thought she I thought she was gonna kiss her though. So yeah. Saying, it sounded like she was trying to like make a move at the movie. Alright, right. I'm gonna just tackle a lot of this. Oh god, you <clears throat> God that yeah. Alright, for one, it sounds like your friend Sarah. Yeah. You you took it a little too far when you said that she was cock blocking you because you weren't getting laid no matter what anyway. Um now with your boring boring date. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I don't think she was. I don't think she was trying to ruin your date per se, but she really planned her hang out with your friend a little poorly. And it sounds like, if nothing else, I don't think she's trying to cock block you, and I don't think she's trying to be a good wing woman either. I think she just wants to be nosy. It sounds yeah. like she just wants to be in your business. Like, oh yeah, my two friends. Let me find out all about it and be in the back and talk. No, no. Like, you need to ask her, like, is it okay if I date your friend? I'm sorry that I called you a cock block. Because that's not going to help you win any points with her friend if you call. You're not going to earn points with Megan by telling her friend Sarah that she's a cock block. Yeah. You don't do that. Even if she did cock block you, you don't say it. It's just sort of like you accept it and move on. Saying it did nothing. Um, I, I don't think it was a mistake to come over and hang out with two with a girl you went on a date with and a friend. You probably should have, if, it sounds like they were in a group, right? Yeah, exactly. He should have chatted up Megan. Yeah. It's like, oh man, it's so weird. Oh, it sucks that you guys didn't make the movie, but since we were having such a good date before this, let's continue talking. Yeah. Like, he messed up there. He messed up when he said that Sarah was a cockblock. Even if she was, should have said she was a cockblock because she's hanging out with Megan right now and she's going to read the text to her yeah. or show it to her, and then you look like the guy who was trying to bang on the first date. That's where your biggest mistake was. You should ask Sarah, like, is it cool if we, if we go on, if, like, if I date her, it's fine. She also doesn't owe you, like, not hanging out with her friend after your date. Girls do that. Yeah. I mean, you're not, it was a first date. And, yeah, also, it, you could have kissed her when she got back, to, when she invited you to her place for hot coffee. I mean. Yeah. You know, that was on you. And, Yeah. You should, you should, to mend the bridges, as you ask, you should apologize for calling your friend Sarah a cock block. Um, just let her know that you were having such a good time and, you know, and you just kind of blur it out, but you feel bad about saying it. Um, you should be sure that Sarah's okay with you dating her friend. Not that you need permission, but you also need to know, like, if she does, if she's not okay with it, you need to know so that you can plan around her. Yeah. Because if you know that she's actively against it and you don't care and you're still going to try to date her friend, then you need to know that she's not on your side. and She's not your wing woman. Um, it doesn't sound like she's a good wing woman for sure because she wouldn't plan to hang out with your friend after a date because no one plans... And we're going to get to that later. I'm glad yeah. we ended with this one. No one plans an end to it. No one, none of your friends who's a wing person is going to help plan for your date to end so that they can do something else. But it also shows that this girl maybe isn't that interested in you because she planned a date with you and her friend said, hey, 
do you want to hang out after the date? She said, yes. So, you know, mend the bridges, but it doesn't sound like you have a shot anymore. Or maybe you didn't have too much of a shot anyway. Yeah. Any thoughts? I, I'm just going to comment on the, uh, the, uh, the fact that, that... That we both lost? Well, yeah, we both lost, but I feel like I was closer. They you could closer. they could have totally kissed him either and not mentioned it to him. Um, uh, they definitely made out. <laughs> uh, and also, I wanted to comment on the fact that she had to go to her friend. That sounds like a rescue thing. Like, oh, I'm having a bad if I'm having a bad day, just send me a text. And if I say, of course, I go to movies, or you know, I feel, I feel like yeah, it, it could have been like, oh, this sucks. Just oh, I'm gonna go to movies. I'm sorry, Sarah and I have to go to movies. Yeah, gotta go. It sounds like she she pulled like an escape plan. Yeah, yeah. Houdini. Houdini. You know, Houdini had a brother. Really? Hey, he had a brother. His brother. He didn't use the name Houdini though. Oh. He used the name Hardin. Hardin, I think. James Hardin? No. <laughs> but uh, he was also an escape artist. Oh. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, I don't know what their actual name was because they weren't like Italian; they were Jewish. Oh, yeah, Houdini is like a made-up name. It's like Hardowitz. Anyway, on to the topic at hand: how to plan jaw-dropping dates. I don't know if you know this, but I plan amazing dates. Um, I've had so many amazing. For I think most people that dated me only dated me because they knew that I th- had awesome dates, and not necessarily that they were attracted to me that much. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of hurts. Not really. Oh, okay. I don't care. You know, God gave me this talent. I gotta spread it. So, here are the tips on how to plan an amazing date. First, you need to do research. And if it's a first date, you need to research both the venue or the potential venues that you want to go to yeah. and the person you're going on a date with. For me, I'm, I'm really good at reading people and reading what they're into. Yeah based on like what they wear. You know, if I especially when I was online dating, if I if all her pictures look like she is very dressy and like is wearing pearls, probably not gonna take her to a dive bar. Yeah. Because she's a little classier than that. <laughs> if all her pictures of her are like drunk at dive bars, I'm definitely gonna take her to a dive <laughs> bar. You know, I'm gonna take her to the diviest dive bar I can find. And it all you know, it's you you gotta know the person and you gotta know the place that you're going to. And the kind of place you'd want to take them that they'd feel comfortable with. And if you're not good at reading people, you can just ask, like, what kind of bars do you like? Or, like, what's your favorite bar? Yeah. And then you just Google that bar. You know, Yelp it and say, oh, it's that kind of bar. It's like a cocktail bar, you know. Yeah. You can also tell, um, you can tell a lot by what people choose to drink. Like, my girlfriend likes gin and tonics. And they're like, she, when I asked my girlfriend, like, what your favorite drink is, she didn't say PBR. Uh-huh. So maybe maybe I shouldn't take her to a dive bar. And I did. I don't think I've ever taken her to a dive bar. Um, you don't specifically believe in researching dates, though. You like to just be flexible, right? Yeah. So, number two is either be flexible like you, yeah. or be like me and over plan. So you, you wing it, and you are super comfortable winging it. Yes. Um, but you also know like the kind of places that your girlfriend likes, right? Definitely. Right. Definitely. So, you, so maybe not research so much as just knowledge. Yeah. So you are very flexible and that works for you. For me, I like to over plan. Yeah. So whenever I plan a date, I have like five options, but I only mention the first one. <laughs> like, we should do this. And then in my head, it's like, unless, you know, it's yeah. all like logic tests. Like, we'll do this unless, and, and then we'll do this unless, and then we'll do this yeah. unless, you know. It's a scientific equation. It's 100% like I build like an access database in my brain. Yeah. Like, and or, like, and or. Dating algorithm? Yes, my dating, out my date algorithm yeah. was strong. It was strong. <laughs> A good example of that is, so when I used to go, when I used to date when I was single, yeah. there was a stretch of bars that I went to in the East Village, like around 14th Street. So I had like five bars in rotation where if she doesn't like this, she's going to like this. Yeah. It was Ninth Ward, which is on 12th and 2nd Avenue. Yeah. And that was like my go-to date spot, especially if it was before 8 p.m. because they had two-for-one drinks. And it also was like really nicely lit, nice music, fireplace. And it was like New Orleans themed and like no one hates New Orleans. No one's ever like, oh, New Orleans themed. This is the worst. New Orleans is the worst. Like everyone yeah. loves New Orleans. <laughs> Uh, and then it was the Belfry, which is 
basically around the corner on 14th Street, and it's a really nice, like, chic bar. It's more of like, it, it's just like a bar. It, they have, like, live music on Thursdays, uh, and there are a few others that I would go to in, like, a 10-block radius. So I always knew, like, if she doesn't like this place, I can go to that place. Yeah. And it was just ready to go. And, you know, I would date in certain areas because it was a midway point, and I knew a lot of bars there. And if she liked sports, and she's like, oh, let's just go watch the game, I'll just take her to Trans East. Yeah. And so it was, like, five blocks away. Point being, you, I did all that research to know, like, these are great date spots. Yeah. Yeah. And I overplanned every single date ever. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. So a good example of that is... A specific example was I went on a date with a girl and I don't even think it led to any more dates but and it wasn't in the 14th Street like radius but I said okay let's go to this place and we get there and she and it's I think it's in Brooklyn it's on Court Street so we get to the bar and the reason we were going there was because they had like a two-for-one special Except on Fridays, which is when the date was happening. No. So we get there, and I'm the one who kind of is like, I don't actually want a beer unless it's two for one. So then we went to like three, we went to one other bar, but I had like three more in the back. And she ended up loving the date, we just didn't hit it off, but, yeah. you know, I think we went, I forget, I even forget the name of the place, but I planned three alternatives, and all of them ended up being good, I think. We ended up doing three bars. One we didn't stay at because they didn't have the drink special. And I was just kind of like, you know what? Let's not, you know, there's no really good seats. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, yeah I don't want to sit at the bar. And then we went to, I think it's called Brooklyn Social. And it's an amazing bar. And it's got like a back area. And then after that, we went somewhere that was a little closer to the train for her, but like a little less fancy. Yeah. And it was perfect because I, I, she was like, "Oh, let's go to one more bar before I head out." And I was like, "Oh, I think I know a place." I'm like, "I definitely know. I yeah. definitely know a place." It was perfect. It was a great day. It didn't work out, but that's cool. Yeah. When was the last? What are you? What are you doing for your date tonight? We're going to an Italian restaurant. What's the name of the place? I have no idea. It's a keep. Uh, it's my girlfriend's date. No, <laughs> same name. That's right. No, she's not paying us, so I can't say her name. <laughs> <laughs> she's, your girlfriend is not a sponsor of this podcast. <laughs> Sponsor the... No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, where is it? Uh, don't know. So she... She, did she the planned all... Everything. She planned the date. Which is great. Oh, man, that's awesome. Do you know why? Because the third step is don't push an agenda. Yeah. So you really can't push an agenda because you didn't even plan the date. No. It's, yeah. I got invited. You got invited? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy, you're just there. You're along for the ride. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's great. Um, and what I mean by that is, if you're someone like me who like plans five steps, yeah, don't push past step one. If step one's amazing, you know, if you're getting drinks and then you're planning to go see the sunset, and you know, you got a five part date, and step one is just going so well, don't go to step two. Yeah. Skip them if you need to. Don't push things. Don't try to make things happen. Just let your date happen organically, especially if it's going really well. If it sucks, then just have all five steps go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't plan an end. That's what I was talking about, where in the question before where, excuse me, the guy's wing girl yeah. like, planned an end for his date, and he was pissed off because it was like, well, now we have to end the date. Yeah. If you're planning a date, and you already plan, well, we're going to go dinner, movie, and then we should be done by like 11. What happens if the date's going really well at 10.55? Yeah. Then you're like, well, um, then you sound like I have, my time is completely free, it's completely wide open, or, you know, like it gives the wrong impression, like you, you, you don't stick to what you say, like you said you had to leave at 11 because of whatever reason. Now you kind of seem flaky, and you're like, yeah, I guess we'll stay out. And I also feel like if you open up your schedule, that gives an opportunity for things to go further than you plan. Like, say, like, oh, you know, I want to be home by 11, but if you want to come over, I mean, we could still continue this date. Yeah. And I can pay for your cab home if need be. And you probably don't have to pay for a cab. You should probably just stay over it or something. Oh, devious. I like it. Yeah. 
Uh, I will say that I've had plenty of dates that went that way. It's like, um, you know, we we had drinks, dinner, and it's like, I don't want the night to end. As long as you don't plan the date, you have the option. And that's really where, um, and I'm not advocating that people be more pr promiscuous than they're comfortable with, but if you're someone who likes the opportunity of getting laid on a date, yeah. <laughs> You can't shut off that opportunity because you need to go home to water your plants or whatever your reason is. <laughs> watering plants? I don't know. You know, like... No, but I, I was thinking about it differently, like watering plants and then, like, girl coming over and watering plants. Oh, wow. Oh, or seeds. Oh, gross. And <laughs> oh, you, that's why you're a bad gardener. <laughs> uh, this is why you can't grow plants. It's putting human ejaculate in it. Um... <laughs> probably stop you on that point being a lot of my dates that didn't end during the same night happened because I was very open to the night going on until it ended until we both were like all right we're done yeah and you got to keep an open mind and keep an open schedule if you're going on a date you can't plan your end and expect a date not to be rushed mm-hmm you know, it makes you it makes you rush, it makes the date rush because they want to squeeze in as much as possible. If you're just casual and you're like, I got nowhere to be, it's way sexier than I, I really gotta go home and feed my dog. Uh, yeah. You know, feed your dog before the date. Or invite them over to feed the dog with you if you're smart. Yeah. But don't put human ejaculate in your plants. <laughs> Probably a bad idea. <laughs> Finally if you had a good date, only if you had a good date. If you had a bad date, it doesn't matter if you follow up. But if you had a good date, follow up quickly. Um, this I can't stress enough. There are the rules about three days waiting. Yeah. It's stupid. That maybe worked when, like, you couldn't contact someone with the ease of opening your phone and typing with your right thumb. Yeah. You know, maybe when you had the phone calls, all that, like, it made sense. Send a letter. Right, <laughs> yeah. Send a <laughs> postcard. <laughs> I enjoyed our romantic dalliances. No, if it's 2015. Text them the next day. But don't follow up immediately, like, the hour after you get home. Yeah. Because they're not your mom. They don't need to know you got home safe. Unless you're a woman. That is fine. If you're a guy, don't text, like, the hour after you get home, like, go home safe. Like, no. Stop. <laughs> uh, if you're a girl and you live in a shady neighborhood, maybe you want to do that with your date. But if your date happened at night, and you get home and it's prime drunk text hours, somewhere between 11 and like 5 a.m., don't send the text then. If it's 8 a.m. the next morning, send a text. Yeah. Had a great time. Can't wait to see you again. Looking forward to when that happens. Simple as that. That way you can find out really quickly if they're interested in another date, if they also had a good time, or if they're not interested, you don't have to text them again. You don't have to wait three days and for them to yeah. say, I'm not, I'm not interested. Thank you, but no thanks. Yeah, because then you have, you're looking forward to the third day, and then you get shut down on yeah. the third day. You're like, well, this was a waste. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely been, I've definitely gone on a really good date that was unplanned, but I sort of, well, not unplanned. I had a lot of options. We did two of them, and the date was great. And I texted her the next day, and she was like, I'm not interested. And I was like, great, I'm back on OkCupid okay messaging people. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for saving my time. Thank you for being honest. And, you know, thanks for having a good date. It was a good day, too. I was like, yeah. Yeah. She was French. She took her to a French restaurant. Yeah. But it was like a really cool French restaurant with a van in the front. Yeah. It was a good day. Didn't work out. I'm glad. Yeah. I don't really speak French. I don't know if you knew that. I kind of knew that. Yeah. And my French is pretty subpar. Do you have any other ideas? Plan? Any other ideas? Thoughts? Don'ts? Things that you should avoid when you're planning dates? Uh, avoid the option that is going to give you a headache. Or that is... <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like... Like, it's cool to do something that they're interested in, but I don't think it should be so far off from what you're interested in. Like, you shouldn't take a person to a rock band concert if you're bothered by loud noises. Like, sure, yeah. Yeah, like, that's so probably not going to work for you. Like, she's going to have a good time. You're going to be pissed off the entire date. Like, yeah. why would I even come to the concert? 
fun too. So only go on a date that you both want to do. Yeah. That's a good idea. Because I think that, um, I for me, it's implied. Because I never do anything I don't want to do. Yeah. But when you're doing the research on the venue, you don't want to pick the date that's perfect for her, but sucks for you. Yeah. Because then that means she'll probably think that you want to do those kind of things. Yeah. And you probably don't. Just like wearing an eighty dollar shirt. Just, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't, you don't, don't change who you are trying to plan a perfect date. Yeah. Don't do things that are out of, out of character for you. Uh, I'm trying to think of. Have you ever done that where you like you plan a date and you're like, "This is terrible. Why did I do this to myself?" Sometimes, yeah. Oh my god, I'm trying to think of a really good one that, that happened with me. Where I was like, "This is this was a terrible." Oh my god, yes, bowling. I took a girl to a bowling date. Oh. And I like bowling with my friends, but yeah. like, you ever bowl with a person? Yeah, it's very boring. It's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> it was the worst. It was one of the worst dates ever. Yeah. It was just so boring. Because then you're like, alright, I guess, you know, because I don't really, I'm not good at bowling. Yeah. So it doesn't, she was like good at bowling. Oh. Yeah. I, I, the most consistent one I have is uh, movies. I've definitely taken someone to a movie that I did not want to see. Oh, God. And I was very adamant about not seeing it, so I'm just like, she's enjoying it, and I'm just like, I can't believe I'm watching oh this movie. Oh, my God, that happened to me. That happened to me. Oh, I'm trying to remember what movie I saw. It was, God, that was one of my worst days ever. I can't remember because it was so long ago. So I was dating a girl uh, who was, at the time, I was, I, like, made no money. Yeah. And this girl... Oh, God. So, at the time, I lived in the South Bronx. And she lived in Washington Heights. Actually, I used to date a lot of people. There. Anyway. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think she grew up in Washington Heights. And, you know, she was, like, the child of an immigrant. And I'm, like, from New York City. So, like, there's certain parts of New York I never want to go to on a date. But one of those is Times Square. I never want to... I don't, I don't even want to go to Times Square... Like, in life. Like, yeah. if you told me I could either go to Times Square or lose a pinky, I would give you the pinky. I would cut it off for you. Like, I'd rather give you that. Yeah. So, she said she wanted to go to the movies in Times Square. Ooh. Was it was it Lowe's? I, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, was, it could be a strip club. It, it wouldn't have mattered. I would not have wanted to go. So, I talk her out of going to the Times Square movie theater and we go to like the Kips Bay movie theater which is on like 30 something she complains about the entire entire movie theater experience we were going to see Cloverfield Ooh. which you know I mean it's an okay movie but she when we get there she decides that she doesn't want to see Cloverfield and I'm trying to think of what movie that we saw and I think it was P.S. I Love You Oh. Ooh. I was like, I've never speaking to this. I never spoke to her again. <laughs> I literally like didn't speak to her at the end of the day. I was like, this is the fucking worst. Excuse my language. I was like, this is the worst. This is the absolute worst. And like she also like I picked her up from her job and she made me wait like two hours. Or like she couldn't get out of work and I was waiting outside for two hours. It was a winter. And, um, yeah, no, that was the last time that I went on a date that I specifically didn't enjoy. Mm -hmm. Like, on purpose. Like, not, oh, this sucked. It was P.S. I love it. I was like, this is going to suck. Why would we put ourselves through this? Yeah. Like, why don't we see Cloverfield? It's a popcorn movie. That was the last time. I think I was, like, 20. Yeah. Oh, man. That poor, poor, poor girl. I literally, like, I walked her to the train in silence. (laughs) <laughs> and then I didn't get on the train. And we needed to take the same train. <laughs> That's how much I was like, I'm done. Yeah. I literally was like, I'm going to... And then she was like, you're not going to get on the train? I was like, I'm going to take a bus. There's no bus that went directly to my house. I was, I was that upset. I'm like, I'm never doing this again. And, yeah. I mean, I did the bowling date, and I was just like... I didn't know that I wouldn't like it, but... Yeah. I kind of had an idea. But I think those were like the last two times I'd done that. Oh, boy. I think that's it. Yeah. Oh, I wish I remembered that person's name. Because I would carve it into, like, a tree and burn that tree down. Gosh, it was terrible. 
All right, that's it, folks. That's all we got. I hope that these tips help you plan. Oh, wait, I wanted to add in another thing about planning awesome dates. Uh, you can plan an awesome date in your apartment, but you have to put in effort. It can't just be you'll show up, we'll order taken. It can't be like a first date. You can't plan the apartment first date unless, unless you actually put in effort. That effort might be cooking. That effort might be, like, you got to do more than just show up and hang out on the sofa. I've planned awesome in-apartment first dates, especially if you're on a budget. Like, not everyone can afford to do Italian dinners where their girlfriend doesn't tell them where they're going. Yeah. Um, but you can cook. And if you're a guy and you're listening and you're like, I don't know how to cook, the internet exists. If you're listening to this, you have access to the internet. Um, so, you know, Google. I didn't know how to cook all that well. I only knew how to cook two things when I first moved out of my mom's apartment, and I know how to cook more things now because reading and learning and the internet. So no excuses, guys. Anything else to add? Well, well how many things can you cook? About five or like, like actual meals? Yeah, I can cook. I think ten different meals, like ten mm. different that's complete that's, meals. That's pretty good. Yeah, you know how many days I could cook two weeks worth of food. Yeah, and, and not repeat. repeat. Yeah, basically. Okay. I mean, I, I never cook, though. Oh. I literally never cook. So, two weeks worth of food throughout a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you, well, your girlfriend's had my chili. It's pretty great. I don't think she ate any. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you can't say her name on the podcast. Yeah, she doesn't pay us and she doesn't eat your food. What is this? She's yeah. not supportive. Yeah. You know what? She's cut from the sponsors list. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Do you have anything else to add before you wrap up? Uh, no, no, no. T today was good. I mean, okay, you know, as opposed. I'm just kidding. Yeah. All right, <laughs> that's it, guys. If you liked any of this advice and want some more dating advice, please subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter at indifferent underscore D. Delaney doesn't have Twitter because he's from the future and there's no Twitter in the future. Um, and of course, you can follow the blog itself for all these articles written in a nice, easily digestible written format. That was weird. That phrasing. Uh, at dalvindifference.com. That's it. Take care and good luck out there. Bye. Bye.